and welcome to today's video where I'll be going through each of my geckos as well as telling you guys their morph, their age, length and how I came to own them. Now before we begin today's video I would like to acknowledge that some of these aren't technically morphs, they may be line traits for example. Genetics is very complex especially with leopard geckos so I would suggest checking out the genetics and breeding guide I did a while ago after this video and I'll link it at the end. But now let's begin with my first ever gecko, Gizmo. So Gizmo here will be 12 this year. She is a wild type with high yellow and jungle traits. High yellow means the gecko will have vast amounts of yellow on its body and a reduced amount of black spots. Jungle usually means that the gecko will have like irregular bands and patterns on its body and tail. And with Gizmo she started off with kind of irregular patterns and bands on her tail which some jungles don't have, um, and they eventually broke out into black spots. One weird feature of hers is she actually has an extra toe. I don't know why. It's never been an issue though, um, so it's just a nice little feature. Anyway, her length is 22 to 23 centimeters, and she was bought from a small, but very experienced local breeder. Now, you may think that Gizmo looks quite similar to another leopard gecko of mine, Mini, and you would be correct to think so since they're actually sisters. So Gizmo and Mini are wild type, high yellow in jungle. However, Mini hatched on the 10th of September 2007, so she is a year younger. She is also about 21 to 22 centimeters long. One distinct feature of Mini's is her eye. Ever since she hatched out, she's always had this defect for whatever reason, clearly when developing in the egg, something went wrong. But, um, you know, I've had to help her catch prey over the years, I've had to take extra time to help with her shedding sometimes and eating, but I think she's living proof that if you're willing to put in the time and effort, even geckos with little defects like this can live a very fulfilled life. Next, let's look at a completely different type of gecko, my mossy prehensile tailed gecko, also known as a chihua. Now I do kind of have a name for him, but I'm not quite ready to confirm it yet, I'm still kind of getting used to it. But anyway, this year he will be two years old, he hatched out some time in December 2016, and he's about 22 to 23 centimetres long. And when you look at him, compared to when like I first got him, you can see he's definitely grown, but in particular his tail, it's really long. As for his morph, as far as I know he is wild type, I don't think there's actually been any morphs properly established in the Chihua world, though I can't be certain. Um, however, he does have apparently red line traits, hence why there's some quite intense red colouring going on on him. He is also a mainland Chihua. Also, in these photos, you can see how much he changes within about 30 minutes. I literally took a photo, left him, came back, and he had completely changed. As for where I got him from, I actually brought him from a very experienced breeder who gives each female a year off to recover after breeding, which I think is awesome. This was actually the first time I had bought a gecko, organised a courier and had the lizard actually transported to me. And if you want to see when I first got him, I'll leave a link in the description down below or in the card right here. Next up, Diego. So Diego has a bit of a different story. For one, I cannot be exactly sure what morph he is. He is clearly some strain of albino and he may or may not be a giant. Apparently though, giant males can reach 80 to 110 grams and considering I don't feed him any more than any of my other leopard geckos and he easily reaches 95 to just over 100 grams, we could probably consider him a giant. <laughs> In total, he's about 24 to 25 centimeters long. And as for where I got him from, I actually got him from Pets at Home. Now this wouldn't be my first choice, but the enclosure he was kept in was really good and he was the last one there. Apparently he'd been there a while. You may have heard the story before, but basically all the workers there, even the so-called reptile expert, told me he was female, when even with just looking in his tank and seeing him led down, I could see his massive man gecko bulges. I could clearly tell he was a male. So I feel a little sorry for the females that shared his tank before I found him. Regardless, he is a lovely, gentle giant who will be seven this April. 
Then we have Ziggy, clearly another albino, however this time I know exactly what she is. She is a raptor, which stands for red-eyed, albino, patternless, tremper and orange. You can actually see on my channel when I first got her at three weeks old, she was tiny and she had these deep red eyes which now appear kind of black but in some light you can still see they're like ruby red. She is now the largest of my females as you can probably tell by the thumbnail which I would like to point out all the geckos were photographed separately at the same angle as my camera was on a tripod so they did not meet once. The last time I measured Ziggy, which was a couple years ago, she was about 23 centimetres long, she may have grown a centimetre or two since. She will actually be six years old in November and I once again bought her from a local breeder, however this was a completely different one to Gizmo Mini. And finally we have Lyra. Now like Ziggy, you can actually go back on my channel and see when I first got her. She was about a year and a half when she came to me from a previous owner who could no longer look after her and she was severely underweight. She was about over 30 grams lighter than she is now which is a lot for a Cresta Gecko. And she was always thought to be a male for some reason, but she's quite clearly a female. Now, according to her previous owner, she was a high percentage Harlequin pinstripe. Now, I'm not very knowledgeable about Crested Gecko morphs, so this may not be true. But one thing that is true is that she is a crowned Crested Gecko, and you can tell this by her massive head. It's about four and a half centimetres across. In length, in terms of her body, she is about 18 to 19 centimetres, so she's technically shorter than the Chihua, but her head makes her look far bigger. Also, a weird feature she has is a face on her head. I'm convinced it's a face on her head. It reminds me of that scene in the first Harry Potter film when, uh, I think Voldemort appears on the back of that guy's head. I don't know, it kind of looks like a face on her head. Anyway, Lyra will be four years old in July. So as you can tell, I have got geckos in all different ways, from a shop, a local breeders, from an owner who can no longer take care of them. So what would I recommend? The truth is, you get good and bad shops and you get good and bad breeders, because let's face it, literally anyone could put a male and a female together. That doesn't make them an expert. What I would suggest is getting to know the breeder and or the shop, figuring out if they breed ethically, if you can tell that they know their stuff, if you're able to meet the parents of the offspring, that's even more of a bonus. And if everything seems well and you're comfortable with it, then go ahead. It is really your choice. As for rehoming geckos, if the gecko in question looks very unwell, severely underway, or may need treatment in the future, those geckos are probably best left with people who can afford the vet's treatment and or has previous experience with the species in question. Though also remember, there are also reptile rescue centres and shelters out there full of reptiles that need new homes, so remember to go check them out too. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and now you have a little bit of a backstory for each of my geckos. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching guys and goodbye.